Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. We've got another AIO, and this time it's the DA360 Pro from PC Cooler. Okay then, so this is the DA360 Pro ARGB Digital High Performance AIO CPU Cooler. This is from PC Cooler. Now let's open this up and have a look. Let me get the shrink wrap off first. Okay then, so in terms of the overall specifications, that is what it supports in terms of the AMD and Intel. So it does support a lot of different types of sockets. That's the overall tube length. That's the dimensions of the radiator, which is a normal aluminium radiator. There is the pump, which is a 3000 RPM pump. The bearing is a ceramic bearing, decibels, and then that's the voltage and the current, and then there's the power consumption. Now for the fans, it's got a hydro, it's got a hydro bearing. That's the overall fan speed by there. It goes from 520 to 200, and that's the airflow, uh, 75.8 CFM. That's quite high. Then there's the rest one, which is a four pin connector. There's the pump LED, which is ARGB, and there's the fa fan LED. So, you've probably already seen the other review I've done of the other AIO. I'm expecting this to be very similar, but obviously, this one has been better. So it's exactly the same way to take it out like the other one, which is rather strange to me, but oh well. So, oh, the fans are pre-installed in this one. Right, so I'll turn it around. Right, so accessory box, if I get out. Oh, right. So, there is all the mounting brackets you need for AMD Intel. It comes with all the screws to attach to your case they're the standoffs i do prefer the mounting when it comes to this and that is it in terms of the accessories Ooh. big copper base plate and then that is the display now this isn't like a uh, led screen it, all it does really is show the temperature of the cpu which does require a usb 2 which i'm assuming the cable isn't going to be as long and it's already got the AMD bracket included. That's already on there. So let's take this off. And have a look at the fans. So this will be the first time I see the fans. Oh, okay. So they're very similar to the other AIO, but instead they're RGB. Where's the cables? Ah, oh, that standard radiator, standard embossing. But let's get this on the test bench and see how it performs. This is the PC Cooler DA360 Pro AIO. I'm going to put the mic up towards the fans at 50% and pull away. Barely hear it at 50%. Same thing, but this time it's at 100% fan speed.
Yes, they're definitely loud at 100% fan speed. Okay, so when it comes to raw benchmarking, first of all, I'm going to tell you the room temp. Now, at the moment in in Wales, in the UK, it's starting to get a bit colder now because we are coming up to autumn. So the room temp at the time of recording before I started testing was 15 Celsius. And after both runs of my different tests, the room did go up by 2 degrees, but so to 17 Celsius. Now I've done two different types of tests. One... 5900x stock settings and then one with pbo and i'm running my four benchmarks that i usually run 3d mark cpu test blender classroom blender pavilion and cinebench r23 reason why is because they hit the cpu different through the run of the tests now 5900x default settings cpu was drawing 145 watts through each test and for Cinebench R23, idles 26 with a max of 61. Blender Pavilion, idles 26 with a max of 60. Blender Classroom, idles 26 with a max of 60. And 3D Mark CPU Test, idles 26 with a max of 65 Celsius. Now, for 5900X with PBO enabled, the CPU did draw through each test 204 watts at the peak at the start of each test, but did go down to 192 watts. And for the CPU clocks, this will give you a good indicator. It started off at 4.9 and it did go down to 4.3, but that is well above base clock. So you're not losing any performance there. I've already told you the room temp. Now for Cinebench R23, the idles are 30 with a max of 81 Celsius. Blender Pavilion, idles 30, max 80 Celsius. Blender Classroom, idles 30 with a max of 79. 3D Mark CPU test, the idles 30 with a max of 73 Celsius. Okay then, so look, you saw the rest of the video. Now I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like. Whether the PC cooler takes my advice or takes my suggestions on board, then that's completely up to them. That is their own prerogative. And what I'm going to tell you I do like, I like the RGB. And I do like that the fact that it performed well. Now, things I don't like. Proprietary cable. I'm actually tired of brands using proprietary cables. Because at the end of the day, if the end user loses that adapter, then they're kind of stuck. At the end of the day, you could have easily used PWM power as well as ARGB connectors. But have them short and have them daisy chain with each other at the back that is a simple way a lot of brands use it that way and at the end of the day the other one i don't like is the fact that the pc the the cable that detaches for or comes off the pump or the block that allows the lcd to actually show the package temp of your cpu that cable is way too short that doesn't accommodate every single case i'm I honestly think they should accommodate any case because at the end of the day, the Shadowbase 800FX is not the smallest case. It's a big mid-tower case. It's big, okay? It should be able to accommodate, accommodate bigger cases because at the end of the day, it's for the end user. You want the end user end user to be very happy with their purchase and at the end of the day a proprietary cable as well as that cable for the lcd being short it's not acceptable at the end of the day it's about the end user it's the consumer it's the person who buys it that is who i back it's the people who buy these products not the brands at the end of the day my personal opinion whatever you take of that but my honest opinion is it's for the consumer end user it's for you guys, the ones who buy the products, the ones that I recommend. So, there's more negative than there is positive. Yes, it performs well, it looks good. But PC Cooler needs to put the consumer first. My responsibility is for the end user and the consumer. Now, yes, it performs well, it looks fantastic, but it's those niggles that I do not like. Now, it gets my recommendation but on a caveat that PC Cooler needs to get rid of the proprietary cables and it needs to make the LCD cable a lot longer to be better for bigger cases. Now, that's my feedback for PC Cooler. If you guys dis actually do agree with me, then please leave me a comment down below because at the end of the day, my responsibility is to the people who are buying it, not the people who are trying to sell it. And that will be always the end user or the consumer. So... Yeah.
look, there's a little rant from uh, Welshy Tech, but still, I uh, hope you at least enjoyed the video, and I'd like to say thank you to PC Cooler. Now, they do have a couple of products that might be some interest of some people that will rival Noctua, and that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, make sure you subscribe because I've got so much stuff on it. Unbelievable. I might as well be a warehouse at this point, but still. Make sure you subscribe because I've got loads of stuff coming from loads of different brands. You know, there's QNAP, there's loads of stuff here. I've even been in talks again with Thermal Right. They're sending out more products you guys have been requesting. So make sure you subscribe for that. And as always, I really do appreciate you guys watching the videos. And honestly, if you agree with my opinions then please let me know down below give the videos a thumbs up because it's all it's me i am looking out for you guys the people who are paying and buying for products at the end of the day it's my word and at the end of the day i think i should have a say in certain things but whether pc cooler decide to take my opinion that is up to them now I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Richard from Welsh Tech. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and week ahead of you. Good. Bye.